Hey guys, so if you haven't already, go ahead and log into your Bonsai Financial Simulation account. Um, go to Teach Bonsai and uh, let's see. I don't want to go there. Anyway, just uh, when you click on the start button, it's going to take you to your dashboard like this. I don't want you to worry about the pre test, I don't want you to worry about the post test. What I want you to worry most about is the life scenarios, and then hopefully by um, the end of next week, we'll get through at least some of the names so you can see what it's like, okay? Um, normally, we have a full weekend in school to work on this, and then like on the block day, we dig out the life scenarios together, and then we have a couple of normal class period days to get the done. So, um, typically this pre-test life scenarios for the game post-test takes us six class days. So, um, just do the best you can with this. I would love to see you finish it, but if you can't finish it, that's okay too. We'll, we'll just get as far as we can go. We're going to click on life scenarios, and what I want to point out to you are a couple of different things. So, like, little money guy pops up and he says, hi, I'm Bill, welcome to Bonsai. It's going to always tell you to click on the box or press enter when you're ready to start. So Bonsai is really good about telling you what you need to do, okay? And you can't do the life scenarios wrong, okay? The game, you can make mistakes, you can make bad choices. But in the guided simulation, it's not going to let you make a mistake, it just won't let you okay? So, until you get it right. So in Bonsai, you will use real life scenarios to track expenses. To plan in your budget and save for a rainy day. These are my friends at Teachers Credit Union. They're pros at managing money. They'll help you along the way. So again, Teachers Credit Union um, makes our participation in this uh, possible because um, they they sponsor us. So okay, so here is your wallet. It holds cash. Your, your screen is going to look like this for the scenario and also for the game, okay? So, here's your wallet. It holds cash. Cash is the ultimate convenience. You can pay anyone again. Even your kid brother, Gilbert, knows what to do with cash. Here is your teacher credit union checking account. So, you learn how to write checks um, in our last lesson. Use it to pay bills, withdraw, withdraw cash, and deposit your paychecks. And finally, Peter Credit Union supplies you with a credit card. The stranger doesn't like that, um, but you have a credit card. Use it carefully. Credit works like a loan. You have to pay it back. Okay, so one thing we really did spend a ton of time on um, this quarter was talking. Well, you did the watch the videos, but I really didn't follow up on that. Um, so just understand that when you use a credit card to pay back with very high interest. Otherwise, you'll incur fees and interest payments. Anytime you see a word that's underlined, if you don't know what it means, if you click on it, it's going to give you the definition. Okay. All right, so here's just a little quizzes pop up from time to time. It says, what's the best way to pay for unplanned expenses? Um, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, as much as it might sound nice to ha um, have parents that help you out or have large sums of cash to carry or take money from other parts of your budget, which we learned in the envelope system that is not good, one of your envelopes is an emergency fund. We talked about that. Your emergency fund should be three to ten months of your income. Okay? So when you click on it, it's the right answer. Yay, yes. Um, which of the following is true about debt? Um, <laughs> That negatively affects your net worth regardless of what it's used for. Okay, so what it means is that, um, you know, if I make, if it's that debt to income ratio thing, if I make um, $45,000 a year and I owe, owe um, you know, between my house and car and some other stuff, I owe several hundred, you know, $150,000 or something like that, then I have a negative net worth because I, I don't make enough and have way more debt than I make money for. Alright. Cash, checking account, and credit card represent accounts. They show you how much money you have or owe. So 
again, where it's underlying me, if I don't remember what an account is, I click on it, it's going to tell me what the account is. Okay? Now, let's figure out what your money is for. This is your budget. So here's our accounts. We have cash, checking, and credit card. In Bonsai, you will take money from and put money in your accounts and budget categories. This is no, oops, I can tell you. This is known as uh, double entry, okay? So your budget, if you want to think about this, it's like your envelope system. So you've got your food, your car, rent, reserves, other utilities. Other is going to be things that kind of miscellaneous don't fall into another category. Reserve is supposed to be your emergency fund. Okay. So, if you need help reading the amount due, click on the image to zoom in. So, if you can't see what's over here, see how there's that plus sign? If I click on it, it's going to make it nice and big. So, rent is $400. Okay. Um, and it says use money in your checking account and take the funds from rent. So we're going to take $400, I'm going to click there, I'm going to type in $400. I don't have to do the dot zero zero, but I did. I'm going to click there. Notice how I took it out, so now it's a negative $400, and it says that I have $25 left in my account. Now I have to go pull it out of the envelope, right? I'm going to click here. Okay, so whatever I do up here, I have to do something down here that equals that amount of money. There's that, and I know I did it right because the bar is green and it says done. Right? See how you took 400 from checking and rent? You made your first expense. The total balance of your budget will always equal the balance of your accounts. In this case, you have $50. Okay? And notice I still have $50 down here. I have $50 in um, my accounts. In personal finance, um, we call it a, a Dave Ramsey calls it a zero based budget when every dollar has a name. So that's why we're keeping the balance out when budget equals the cash I have. Congratulations, you got a full time job. The employer withholds taxes from every paycheck. The amount you actually receive is shown as net pay on your pay stub. So this is your paycheck over here, and this is your pay stub. About that. This is your pay stub. Um, shows me, if I click on it, shows me that I make $10 an hour. I work 40 hours. So for this pay period, I made $400. And year to date, I made $400. Now, if you get more paychecks, this number is going to go up. In fact, everything in this column is going to go up. But here's the thing this is known as your gross income. Okay? Here's the thing this over here, this is where Uncle Sam wants to share, okay? So we have to deduct our federal income tax, our Social Security, our Medicare, and our state income tax. And then we have what's left over is our net pay. The rule of thumb is that you can pretty much plan on losing um, one quarter to one third of your paycheck in deductions. So in this case, it's all taxes, but like if you have health insurance or retirement investing that come out of your paycheck, um, that are sponsored by the place you work at, those types of fees come out of your tax too. Okay, so our fee check is actually $323.21. It's not $400. Um, I will tell you, when I first moved out on my own, the first mistake I made um, was planning my budget on my gross pay, not my net pay. So, put the money in checking and divide the pay check across your budget based on the sticky note. Don't forget to magnify the image by clicking on it. So, if we go here, you see, I'm going to put $25 in my car budget, $75 in my food budget, and $80 in my other budget, $142.21, which is the remainder, I'm going to put in reserves. So, first I'm going to come to checking, and I'm going to type in 322.21, because that's where I'm going to put my money. And then I'm going to put $25 in car, so I click on car. Oh, and 
down to this. I'm putting 75 in food. A big band is coming down, so I'm putting 80 and others, so I can buy concert tickets. And I'm going to put the difference, the rest of it, in reserves. Okay. So we just click on these different things, and it's pretty easy to do. If you, and I know I did it right because the number is green. Now, just let me show you. Let's just say I make a mistake. Okay, so I come in here, and let's just say I type 42, 21, because I missed the one. I click OK. It's not telling me I'm done. So that's my first clue that I made a mistake. Okay? Sometimes the bar is red. And it says that it might point out something you're trying to do. Um, that's wrong. So, um, usually you get a pretty good indication of what's going on. Okay. Great job, you recorded your income. Right. The pattern you're using to track your finances, recording the account and the budget is called double entry accounting. Okay. Look at you, fancy pants. Alright, so now we stop for gas. Now, if we were in the classroom together, I would say, how much do we spend on gas? And I will tell you that almost every time I answer, I ask that of the class, people tell me, well, it's $25. But it's not. Okay? And these are mistakes you make when you're putting money in your checking account, um, when you're trying to fill out a checkbook register. And no, I didn't normally teach you how to do that in the check writing unit. We just really ran out of time. Um, you know, I cram a lot into a quarter-long class, and, um, you know, only two hours of instruction a week is not enough to cover the material that we do in the, um, in the quarter-long classroom class. So, you know, if this is something that's interesting to you, and you signed up for financial literacy for teens next year, we're going to go over this. Um, but if not, you'll, you'll go in depth when you get to high school and you have to take personal finance. So, um... But uh, if you're in that class next year or you want to try to get in that class next year, um, I'm teaching it. It's called Financial Literacy for Students. And I'm going to really teach you how to use money and save money and kind of like the end goal is saving money for college. So, um, or, you know, whatever your plans are after high school. Because not everybody goes to college. Um, maybe, maybe after high school, you know, you're going to um, go into an apprenticeship and you need to buy some tools or you need to buy a car. Um, it's all about teaching you how to save, okay? So, we bought gas, we asked about $20.15 worth of gas, so it's telling so it's me I need to use the cash. I'm going to do $20.15. Click OK, and I'm going to take it on my car budget. I'm going to do OK, and we're done. So, at any time, if I'm going to test for you, the beauty of this is you can press pause. You were low on cash, so you hit the ATM on the way home. Enter the station bond that is a transfer, moving money from your checking into cash. So this is going to be a two-part question, because how much did I take out? It took up $20. And I got cash, so I'm just doing this. Okay. And then it's going to say that I had, oh, it didn't. It didn't charge me a convenience fee. Normally it charges you a convenience fee. Maybe that one is later on in the scenarios, but it'll charge you a convenience fee, and so um, you have to account for that, too. But anyway, we went out for lunch. We spent $17.08. We did cash. So $17.08. Okay. So we did cash. This is where it's kind of underpainting. This is why when I was teaching the envelope system, I told you guys like the eating out should be a separate envelope. Because if you have a $75 grocery budget and you just spent $17 eating out, it's a bit chunkier grocery budget, right? So you know, it kind of puts this, I love this scenario because it puts everything in perspective and it really is real life financial choices that you have to make. All right, so we have the deal of the century on kumquats at right price. Um, but we're using our credit card. We're going to take it from the food budget. So we're, we spent $55.11 right there. Okay. And we're going to take it out of food.
All right, so here's that uh, concert we're going to. Um, we're going to see the Styrofoam Burritos. So um, we are going to take your ticket with your credit card. And feel pretty good about this because we budgeted for it, right? And we're going to take it out of our other. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Mercury, you hurt yourself at the concert because you have a huge copay put the full amount on your credit card. Since this was emergency, you can take it from reserves. Go ahead and pause the video and click on copay so you can learn about that and understand it a little better. And I'm going to keep plugging along, so let's look over at this. Our bill was $450. Ouch. Okay. So we are putting it on the credit card. I'm taking it out of reserves. I'm saying, but wait, this is shooting because there's not enough money in there. Reserves is the only account that they let you go next to. Okay? Because they're saying that if you use your credit card for an emergency, it's okay. Well, we learned in the video we watched that really is okay. If you want to have that nice, robust emergency fund, so if we have a $450 emergency bill, we can just pay cash for it, right? Um, which of the following can be considered an an emergency expense. Um, yep, it's the first one. Bam. And what could be said about emergency expenses? It's best to set the money aside before it happens. Okay. Bummer, you're in that. Wah, wah, wah. Your reserve budget is special and can record a negative balance, but we don't want it to. Okay? When you earn money, pay off your debt by putting it in the reserves. Once the balance is positive, use reserves to save for a rainy day. So, um, when you play the game, your reserves account, you have that. Um, so, you know, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be playing with this more. Um, this has a lot more to do with the game than it does this, because um, you'll have to pay your, your off your debt in the game to reach your financial goal. Okay, so, oh, it's your credit card statement arrived, arrive, glance over the charges. Um, I can't see what number scenario we're on, so, um, but, um, oh, here we go. I'll do a couple more. I'll at least get to a tricky one. Um, okay, you don't have enough to pay the entire bill, pay what you can. We're going to transfer $325 from checking to your credit card. So that's three hundred twenty-seven twenty-one. Um, we can't pay the balance of full. So we're just going to put $325 um, in our credit card. Um, here, and we're going to transfer, transfer it to the credit card. Like so. And we know we did it right, so it's green done. Yeah, an enabled parking ticket. Ooh, this one's bad. Write a check and take this unexpected expense from reserves. Now, this is another one where when I'm in class, we look at this and inevitably people think you gotta pay $50. Uh, if you live in Clinton and you get the water bill, you have to be super careful with which one you're paying because the do that what you do now is um, it, it's not always crystal clear. And there have been a couple times I've paid the past due expense instead of the um, normal one, and then we just put a credit, but still, um, you need money. So, $25 is what we have to pay. So, we're going to write a check, and we're going to take it out of reserves again. So, $25. And we're going to take it out of reserves. And we're done. Oh, no. Brat. An overdraft. At least the bank didn't bounce the check. If you came from your checking account, since you did see coming, take it from reserves. So, how much is the fee? Just click over here. Da -da -da -da. Oh, the fee is, oh, right there. The fee is $30. Okay, so we're going to do 30 Oh, we are then that's the problem with that, you know, the $25 parking ticket that now costs us $55 because we made that mistake. 
And here, and 30, okay, and we're done. Thank goodness it's saving. Okay, so now we have another budget. I'm going to tell you um, this is 32, this bottom one is 32.74, okay? Um, the final paycheck that I'm not going to demonstrate for you. Um, there's a six that looks like an eight. Or something like that. Just be really careful when you're reading at these and make sure you magnify them because a lot of students have trouble with it because the way they write the number. It looks like a six when it's a five, or it looks like a nine and, or a six and it's an eight. That, you know, I, don't, I, mean, I can't remember exactly what it is, but just look at it closely. Okay, so going back to that first paycheck, what are, what are we depositing right now? So we're going to look at this pay period and we're going to look at the net pay. So it's 307.74. Now that we have more than one paycheck, we can see that we've taken home $629.95. Um, but your date, we have earned $780 total. Okay, so 307.74 is what we're putting in our checking account. So we worked a couple fewer hours. Okay. Um, probably because we got her at a concert, right? Um, okay, so back to our budget. We're going to put two, 225 for gas. Oops, I can say that. That's going in park. Um, we are putting 45 in food. We are putting five dollars in other. Yeah, it's so helpful. And we're putting 32.74 in reserves. And we did it right. We got the green done. All right. So if you need to pause, go ahead and pause so you can replicate this. And with that, I am going to stop. Okay, but I would like you to finish the life scenarios. So if it takes you a couple days, if you close out of this and go back in, it's going to pick up where you left off. Also, if you experience any kind of technical glitch where it like won't let you make a choice or you're really stuck, you know you've got the right answer and it's just not accepting it, close the tab. Just close the tab up here and come back into Bonsai and it will pick up where you left off. So don't worry about it. You'll have to redo that one you were stuck on or got hung up on. Um, you'll have to redo that again, um, but you won't have to worry about um, having to start over again, okay? And um, um, I'd like you to finish this. If you get finished and you want to start to play the game, then go ahead and do that. The goal in the game is to save uh, $2,000 for college, okay? So um, go ahead and play the game. Um, if you don't get to start the game, that's okay. Um, Monday, I will be posting um, what I want you to do Monday and Wednesday for next week, um, which will basically be the last thing we do. Um, normally, when we're at school, I do a walking field trip to a high school. On Wednesday, um, last quarter, I did a virtual walking field trip to the high school for my students. I showed them around um, the business and marketing department at the high school, talked about my classes, talked about DECA. A um, bunch of those things. So I will post that for you on our last official posting day for school. And then that's all I'll have for you unless I need to help you get caught up. Okay, so you guys um, go ahead and have fun with this. If you have questions, I'll be available during my office hours tomorrow or today to help you today and tomorrow. Um, so just reach out and I'll do what I can to get back to you right away. All right, you guys? Yeah, have a good one.